Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast here at Jab Boxing today with Slavisha Gegic. Did I nail that? Yeah, yes. you got it exactly right. Well, Josh said you're Serbian Slav, so I'm going to call you Serbian Slav from now. Um, Serbian Slav, how are we? I'm, I'm very good. Just came into training and I'm doing an interview now, so it's, it's a bit different. But yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. All about yourself? Very well, thank you. Um, always a good laugh down here. And yeah, Josh said to me that you came in for training and he has just sprung this on you. So this is very last minute we're talking. I literally, I'm not even tying my shoelaces yet. And he just said to me, do you want to do an interview? Like, okay, I, I don't mind. <laughs> um, so yeah, just a little bit to get to know about you, your career, your background. Josh described you as the cleverest boxer he knows and then told me that you're doing a degree in biomedicine, yeah. which is not the most boxer thing that I've ever heard. Um, so you've got a couple brain cells, unlike most of them. I've got some, not many left, but some. <laughs> Um, no, with um, the degree, it was something I was always passionate about. So I'm in my final year of doing it. And alongside that, I've been doing the boxing. So I've been at Islington Boxing Club prior to joining um, Jab Boxing. And I've just been doing the two hand in hand whilst working. Yeah. What was your sort of history in boxing? Was it something that perhaps your family were involved in or something you were a big fan of as a kid? What is your sort of, let's say, what's your first outstanding boxing memory i think for me i used to go to a youth club back in fulham called uh brunswick which was like a, a general youth club they did football did everything and they had a, a boxing club there or they did boxing and they had some amateurs i was there for a good three to six months just generally training and the guy said to me i think you should do amateur boxing so i did my medical and i thought about doing it but i was 16 17 going to college so i had different priorities you know what i mean telling around that age so I left it, and then when I was about 21, I was working in Central London in a retail shop, and I joined Fight City Gym, the one where, I think at the time, Larry Akandeo was training there as well. So I see him, I think, wow, that's amazing. Um, and I was just training randomly, turning up for sparring, not taking it seriously. And they said to me, do you want to join in on a white collar event? I said, okay, cool, just for the fun of it. Um, had a great time, won the fight. And then the guy said to me, um, one of the trainers over there, I don't think this is really for you. I think you should go do amateur. So I went to Islington just for the sake of, because I enjoyed it. Um, and next thing you know, it was just win, win, win. I got to the point where I was 20 fights undefeated, I believe it was, as an amateur. And I realized, okay, maybe I'm good at this. <laughs> um, and that's where, you know, it went going from there. And you were knocking people out as well. You weren't just beating them in the amateurs. Power in both hands is what I've heard. You were knocking people out cold in the amateurs, which isn't the most common method of victory, shall, shall we say. But yeah, you had power even in the amateurs with the head guard and with the big gloves, you were putting people down. Um, well, yeah, I think it took me a little while to get my feet right. I think, ironically, as a novice, I didn't really knock anyone out. And then when I hit mid, like intermediate elite stage, every second or third fight, the fight was getting stopped. So... That was a bit more, you know, I think it's just finding your feet kind of thing. And then from there, I think from after I won the Haringey Box Cup, it was literally every second or third fight someone was getting stopped. So it just, just cracked on from there, really. And you look at it now and I, you want to turn professional. Or have you already turned professional? Or are you looking to sort of get the license in and all the sort of admin stuff done at the moment? I've signed all the paperwork I need to. I've sent it off to the board right now. Um, I know there's a bit of a backlog with COVID and with everything going on. So once I sit down with the board and hopefully pass my medical, um, I should then be out within three to five months, I'd be hoping so. Yeah. And I mentioned the fact that you're doing a degree. So if you're going to be doing this alongside boxing, I suppose boxing will take priority as a professional, um, but you've got the degree as like a backup. Then I, I suppose, is, is that how it's going to work? I think it's two separate things. Um, with a degree, I'm finishing off over the next month. So I'm just finishing off. I'm halfway through my dissertation. I've got another month and a half to get that sorted. Um, to me, it's, it's, I would say right now, boxing will take priority in terms of as a career. Uh, but again, boxing isn't a sport where you can do till you're 60. So I think right now, the priority is boxing. And then when it comes to the 9 to 5 or the other the normal world as such, that's when I'm then going to take my degree and hopefully uh, go far with that. Yeah. You've got your head screwed on, makes a change for a fighter. Um, so they called you Serbian Slav, but you told you said at four, or how old was you at something, at 
four? He was in Fulham at four years old, or did I make that up? Oh, no, no. So I came to the... Well, my my parents came to the country back in 99. Right. I'm born in 94, so I was about four or five years old when they came here. It was it was a, a generally just a, a lifestyle choice that it was, things weren't the best after, you know, there was a war and stuff happened generally. So um, they felt the need to move to make a better life. So I came here around the age of four or five of my parents. Um, and then from there, I lived in Croydon, Shepherd's Bush, Fulham, uh, Kentish Town in Islington. We moved, you know, different areas from around. Um, but it was in Fulham when I was about 15, 16. That's when the boxing, you know, I did a bit of it, as I mentioned. Yeah, so you come over here and you're four years old. Because, yeah, you are very well spoken for... Uh, when he said you were a Serbian fighter and you said to me, you started talking to me before, I was like, hold on, you're more well-spoken than some of my mates. So it, it seemed like you've been over a while. Um, and yeah, now you're down jab boxing, obviously. We know Josh worked with some top professionals, guys who've been on the biggest shows. Um, have you mentioned to Josh about perhaps linking up with anyone in particular? He will be training and guiding you. Mm-hmm. I believe if you spoke to him about where you want this to go, your dreams and aspirations, and like I said, Josh has worked with some really well-known guys in this country. I think with the link up, it came from literally from sparring. So they called me up and um, to help Jez prepare for the fight against Kerman. Um, and they said to me, listen, we think you're a fit for the sparring. Can you stay? And then from there, we developed a relationship as well. And Josh helped me get my foot into the into the pro side of things, uh, which, you know, other people have been cool. But Josh has really been you know, amazing in terms of that way. Um, I think for now, the priority is to get myself out there and get the first bits of pro experience um, in the ring with the gloves um, and with a different style of fighting. From there, moving forward, it will hopefully lead to titles and other things that can go from there. But right now, I'm just focusing on getting myself ready for my debut and then seeing what goes on from there. So it was only recent then, because obviously... Jason Kerman was only the other weekend, so you and Josh, this is a very recent thing. Yeah, that's right. So we knew each other from before because about, I think last year at some point during, uh, in between lockdowns, I came down here with Masood, uh, Masood Abdullah. Oh. So yeah, so me. So you're close. To, I know Masood really well. Yeah. Yeah. So me and him literally started about a month apart at Islington, and we've been sparring partners, friends, everything for the last four years. The guy's amazing. Um both as a boxer and just as a person in general. And I just came down with him one of the days. He said, Slav, I've got a place, me and you can do a bit of sparring where we're allowed to. I said, okay, cool. He came down, we did three rounds and I did three rounds straight after with, I wish I remember his name right now off the top of my head. It was another one of the ki- uh, kids here who does boxing and kickboxing. Yeah. And oh, um, that's it, Amancio. Yeah, 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 we did the three rounds. And um, I remember just being shattered. Like, I wasn't ready for, you know, just sparring properly. I just came up for the sake of it. I wasn't training, you know, killing myself. And I did three rounds with Masu, did a round with Mansu. I thought, this is a good round. Came up for the fourth round and Mansu just started throwing shots. I thought, oh, this isn't going to go well. Um, and then that's where I met Josh. And, you know, we, you know, Josh is cool. I'm cool with him and everything. And, and then, again, prior to the Kerman, or prior to Jez starting um, the camp, he called me up and said, can you come down for sparring tomorrow? So it was a Sunday. He said, can you come on the Monday? I said, all right, cool. And he said, you know what, just stay. We're happy with you as a sparring partner. Can you stay and do the sparring? And then from there, we just built that relationship. Yeah. Have you got anyone perhaps you look at in the past or anyone growing up, fighters over the years that you look at and not even base yourself on fighters that perhaps made you fall in love with a sport, anyone that you look at as a favourite, like with fond memories? Um, I think it depends. There's so many different fighters I haven't got a favourite as such. In the most recent time, like most people, it'd probably be, probably be Golovkin that I really do love watching. I love what he does because he makes... Him and, him and actually him and Badu Jack, actually them two, the reason why is they make, they make um, elite world-level fighters, he makes, they make it look so simple. The little head movements, you know, moving around them. They make, they make those people look like they're novices. And it's crazy how they do it. But I think those two are the ones where I look at them and I think you make it look so, so simple, but it's not. And I, I think out of them two, it's probably, yeah. Them. Love those guys, love GGG. And Joe, you know not many people say Badu Jack. Like, if you say to people who are your inspirations, they might say Mike Tyson, more recently the likes of Lomachenko, but not many people say Badu Jack. It, it's, like I said, when I watch his fights against um, Groves, the Gale, and a few of the others, 
it's just the little things he does. He makes it look so easy and you know it's not. And he doesn't do a lot. He keeps it very simple and he slowly just gets to people over the rounds. And you notice it as they go on round six, seven, eight, nine. And people just tend to get worn down by him. And he doesn't look like he's doing a crazy amount of work. It's amazing, I think. Yeah. And he's never in a boring fight, which helps. Um, Slav, thank you very much for speaking to IFL TV. Hopefully when everything is more concrete with your pro career and when you're going to make your debut and whatnot, we could come back down, uh, perhaps see you in action on the pads as well. And um, yeah, I know it's last minute, but thank you very much. Thank you for, for having me in terms of the interview. This is a bit more nerve-wracking than sparring, but fair enough. <laughs>